Hey, Monica, how are you doing? Hey, Mayan, good to be here. I'm really excited that we're going to talk about automation, your favorite topic. A lot of our IT colleagues spend over 70% of the time in maintaining and keeping the lights on of their IT environments and data centers. Imagine if some of that or most of those tasks are automated, how much time would they free up for innovation? You know, according to Gartner, by 2023, 40% of INO teams will use AI augmented automation in large enterprises, for example. So that's obviously yeah. where it, all, a lot of work is happening. So I absolutely believe we should look at some ways of judiciously automating repetitive mundane tasks. I think you you hit the nail on the head exactly. I think especially not just the general direction of the industry, especially with all the changes the globe has seen over the last nine nine months, right? I think there's a renewed focus on lowering the operational cost. I, in fact, I think uh, this is again Gartner that in the next two, three years, they're saying that organizations are planning to reduce operational costs by 30%, again, by using HCI technologies with advanced automation. Just like any new technology adoption, I think the focus on people and process is equally important along with the technology. So to me, I think that's some of the biggest things an organization needs to focus on is what's the impact on people? What's the impact on process? And what kind of technology is actually going to help the organization achieve the results they want to get with automation, right? So in fact, uh, one of the bigger biggest retailers on the market, they use Nutanix automation to deploy and update IT software at over 600 remote office, branch office locations when the pandemic started. And so, you know, there's obviously lots of use cases out there, but I think the process and focus on people are equally important. Uh, one more place where we have seen our customers definitely use, leverage the benefits of AI is identify resources being over-provisioned or resources being wasted. There's a tremendous amount of cost savings that can be had when you have all these tools to augment your experiences, and that way we not just wait, uh, remove wastage, but we can deploy infrastructure at scale. The more I think about automation, I want to talk about self-service, right? We live in a world where self-service is really how we, uh, we actually uh, consume technology. We are consuming applications in even real life. I mean, think of the smartphone that we are, we are you know, so uh, tied to our hip, right? We are so used mm -hmm. to instantly, quickly on demand, getting access to the data we need, to the services need, we need, to the banking services, to e-commerce services. Similarly, I think even in IT, are the, their customers really are also wanting that same level of self-service that we're used to in our personal life. So what I see is that we have a lot of real customer advantages in using automation to deliver those self-service type, you know, so, uh, solutions to IT and their customers. And I'll give you a couple examples, Mayank. Sure. You know, Fairway, sure. which is an independent mortgage company, it's in the financial services space, right? So they obviously are using Nutanix technology to automate. And by doing so, they were able to actually uh, have a four times smaller deployment footprint leading to cost savings in the data center. They were able to improve the desktop logins and speed of desktop lo logins, therefore improving their customer experience and loyalty. They were able to automate their infrastructure management and provisioning. So that's just one example. And you know, I have we have tons of examples, as you know, Mayank, I know you've worked with Home Depot. I'd love to hear sort of data from oh, yeah. you. Yeah, on what Home Depot Absolutely. is doing. Yeah, especially in the pandemic, everybody's trying to redecorate their home. So I think Home Depot <laughs> is a very big Nutanix customer. And right. the Home Depot case is very, again, very relevant. Again, what they see is, especially with surges in demand, they need to do capacity planning. And right. once they adopted uh, automation and capacity planning through Nutanix, uh, and this is a fact from their IT in infrastructure team, is that they had zero on plant surprises. Uh, while using capacity planning. So now they had an exact idea of how their infrastructure was scaling. Mm -hmm. And when they had to onboard new infrastructure, they could plan for it. Similarly, the provisioning time went down from three weeks 
to under one hour. So that's a huge saving for the IT team because there are fewer disruptions. The team is more agile now. They, they're the the end developers and the end teams can be productive much more faster. Uh, a lot of time, automation is essentially a sum of various tools, and mm-hmm. it's important that uh, any automation solution you choose works across a gamut of uh, vendors and partners. For example, our services with ServiceNow, ITSM tools, or all public clouds. We conducted an ESG study uh, again with our customers. We were not involved uh, on these interviews, but ESG just interviewed these customers. And some very tangible data points, uh, some of them which definitely I wanted to list here is that overall our customers uh, reduce their operational costs uh, and uh, by almost 60% by mm-hmm. managing, by ease of management. So they have to spend less time on management. They reduce their operational costs by 3x. One of the things which came again and again, especially with self-service, was faster faster deployment of servers. They were able to deploy their servers uh, almost 20x faster, which is a huge jump. You're not talking about small percentages, but a quantum of jump uh, in how fast these services are being developed. Look, Mayank, this is a topic that we can talk about for hours. It's clear that... We don't have the time. (laughs) Exactly. It's clear that automation is not just about cost savings, right? I mean, that's a very important component. But for me, when I talk to customers, it's clearly about delighting their customers. So I think there's a whole component of productivity, delight. There's a cost savings. There's streamlining. There's making sure people are working on more strategic things, right? If something can be done by a machine or software or cloud, well, then let's do it. Let's make sure our people, the most valuable resource in any organization are employees and customers, that they are not spending endless amounts of time doing unproductive tasks, right? Which can be done by the software. So that's number one, productivity. Number two is the more we automate, the faster access we can give to our services, to our customers. That's called delighting customers. Ultimately, we do end up saving cost savings because we're saving possibly in human time that we spend, we're saving in computing resources, we're saving in lots of other things, operational resources, as you said, all of that we can now take and we can really invest in innovations in the organization and driving, you know, projects that can create more revenue for the company, right? More, better customer experience, better employee experience. So I just think this is a, a fantastic, you know, area for organizations to invest in is to see that you know, find places where they can automate more and more of their operational tasks uh, using technology. So thank you, Monica, for that very insightful conversation, uh, especially bringing out points and tips which our customers and partners can use. So it was wonderful talking to you.